So it's like without Columbus Park, yeah. like what would I have ever had a, a footprint in golf? You know what I mean? And one of the attractions for me to the game was the friendships, man, that I that I made down through the years. To hit balls, we'd have to sneak back behind the maintenance shack over there, pull our cars up to the green, up right. by the green, and chip and putt, man, 12, 1 o'clock at night. Like, you gave me this confidence that, like, I was safe, I was good wherever I went. I used to hate to be off. Yeah. Man, I was gonna miss something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> My boy's out there looking for some yeah, action, man. man. Yeah. What's good? Welcome to a special Father's Day edition of Range Talk. Uh, I know y'all probably think Father's Day was a few days ago, but just like most good gifts, it's on the way, you know? Uh, today I get to spend time with the man that swept my mother off her feet and elected to procreate with him. My police officer and mediocre golf and tough loving daddy, Roger Steele Sr. Big Raj, or Pops as some people more affectionately call him. Today I wanted him to share some light on where he came from and where we came from and to publicly tell him thank you for not just being my father, but also my hero. Damn, probably the softest shit I done said on camera right there. They don't tell you about this cloud, how soft it makes you. Uh, Y'all just enjoy this episode. Yeah. A little chunky, but we'll take it. Look at that little tour. <laughs> man, what up, big dog? Hey, man, so look, it's, uh, right now it's, you know, after Father's Day, and, you know, I didn't really get you a gift for Father's Day because I've been out here busy, but I just wanted to tell you, man, I cannot thank you enough for not only introducing me to this game, but all of the, the steps and the things that you did that I didn't understand as a kid, like, I, I thank you for all of that stuff, you know? And I know I wasn't the easiest to raise, and I know you had a lot of difficult stuff to navigate as, as you were trying to raise, you know, a young black dude in the, on the west side of Chicago. And I, didn't, I just couldn't see, you know, what you were really trying to get me to see at the time, but I appreciate everything, every single choice that you made as a father. And, you know, I, I think that you've done an amazing job, dog. And, you know, I, I, I look up to you like, man, you've been my, you've been my hero my entire life. You know what I mean? Start to finish. And, and I thank you for being a, a, an amazing example of, of what a man and a father should be, you know? Appreciate it, man. So I just wanted to say that on camera because I'm never going to say that to you again. Man, I, just, no, I, had to, I, had to get that, I had to get that out the way. First time I've, I've ever heard that, man. <laughs> but anyway, hey, man, you've been a blessing to me as well, man. So, you know, it, it was a two-way street, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I've kind of lived through, vicariously through you, man, all, all, all your life, man. So, you know. Hey man, I appreciate appreciate you as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know. Those two are the those that's the nicest exchange that I've ever had with my father, and, and we got it on camera. So that's <laughs> man, for whatever that's worth. Yeah. But look, yeah. man, we got Callaway to pull up out here to Columbus Park, baby. Columbus Park, Where man. It all started, man. Yeah. AKA the bullpen. The bullpen. The bullpen, <laughs> man. Hey, so so talk to me about like when when you get your start in golf, like you know how did how did all of this come about for you? Well, well, I, I started golf uh, in 1975. 75. And how I got started was a very good friend of mine who's now deceased. He's one of the better golfers out here, and uh, he kind of for for a period tried to get me to start playing golf, you know, and I, you know. Put it off, put it off. So finally, one day, man, I agreed to go uh, to the driving range with him. And yeah. uh, I've always been an athlete. And, you know, like with golf, man, it's something you see it, man. It's, oh, man, I could do that, man. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. We kind of under, underestimated, you know. So he took me out to uh, the driving range out in Melrose Park. And man, I'm swinging at the ball, missing it, man, <laughs> and getting frustrated. And I said, man, come on now. And, uh, you know, and man, I'm telling you, I, I just, uh, it, it was a challenge. Right. It was a challenge, you know. But one thing about my, 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 my buddy that taught me, he would not let me come out here. We had to go to the driving range maybe eight or nine times before he 
brought me out here. Yeah. You know, because he knew I would come out here and, you know, swing the ball, miss, frustrated. And like a lot of guys, I'm sure you've seen guys, met guys, that start out golfing, man, and get frustrated. They, too, and, they, they come, you know, they come they to the course too soon. Dollars on, 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 on equipment, man, and, and end up uh, not playing, you know. Right. But anyway, so he he encouraged me to go to, it took me to the driving range, maybe eight or nine times before he brought me out here. Right. Okay? And I was chopping at the bits, man. Come on, let's go to the golf course. Let's go to the <laughs> I'm golf ready, course. man. Yeah, I graduated ready, ready. already. Come on, yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, garage. Uh -huh. So he took, he brought me out here, and the, my very first nine holes, man, I shot 81. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's just impressive. You counted all. I shot 81, but let me tell you what happened. Yeah. The best shot of the day was on the ninth hole, man. Right. You know what I mean? And that, man, it gave me, it encouraged me, man, you know. Hey man, so uh, you know, I just start coming back, coming back, you know, and uh, that, that's how I got involved. But so like, so you you had this one round. How how long did it take before you actually got decent at golf? Before you start gambling? Before you start doing all uh, that? Well, you know, back then we had a little game called skins. Oh, we play. Everybody play skins, dog. A little game called skins. That's yeah, the little, that's yeah. the game of golf. Yeah, a little game called skins, right? Uh, for a quarter. Uh huh. Quarter, quarter skins. Hole, yeah, right. And. Uh, I, you know, mess around with guys with my own uh, ability, man, and start, you know, winning skins, man, and, you know. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of how. About how know. many years it take, though? That was in my first year. Toward you start gambling uh, right away? Yeah, toward the end of my first, oh, yeah, yeah. My first year. You gamble right away. Year. And so then, so, so, and then you, 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 you start gambling, but when is your game, when did your game get, like, solid, though? Solid? Oh, man, it took, you know. It took, how long? Get, frame it up for the people. For okay, start, say, beginner golf, you began honestly, as an adult, and then when did your game get solid like you was? I say honestly, man, in about, maybe about five, six years. Six years? Yeah. When I really stopped playing in tournaments and, you know, felt I had a, you know, uh, I was competition ready, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. About five years. That's why I be telling my homies too, you know what I mean? Give it about five, six, seven years, you know yeah, what I mean? Before, yeah, before yeah. It, right, you know? Right. Yeah. So then you, you, at this time, though, you also on the police force, right? Let me say this. Okay. I was putting in a lot of hours, man. What, but then why you was on the police force? You was on, you was putting yeah, in? It was the police department here. <laughs> Go home, get some sleep, police department here. <laughs> and I was talking a lot of hours, man, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, quite naturally, uh, the, 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 the better you play, the more you want to play. Exactly. You know, so, let me see. Yeah. Let me see you hear something. So, hey, Dad, so tell me about being a police officer in Chicago, dog. What was that like, you know, in the in the early years? Well, honestly, man, it was uh, I enjoyed it. Uh huh. Ain't no twirl on that one. <laughs> hey, hey. I, I enjoyed it, man. I, you know, uh, first of all, I was I was a police I was a police cadet, so. When I was going to college, I was kind of working in the police stations and, and you know, and I, you know, met a lot of police officers, guys much older than me, you know. Yeah. So that, that, that kind of encouraged me to apply to become a police officer. I was, a, you know, civilian, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, with the, in the cadet program, they allowed you to become a police officer at the age of 20 yeah. rather than 21. Right. So I, I you know, I, I, uh, I, you know, signed up for the police department and, and, and you know, went through the, uh, the vetting and that, and, uh, you know, and ended up getting the job, man. But I, you know, in hindsight, I believe I was a little too young. You was too I, young? I was telling you this before. You know, cause I, I was impressionable, you know, and I was working with guys much older than me. Yeah, in some cases, guys old enough to be my dad, you know, so, you know, I was a little, I, I think you should be, you know, maybe in your mid 20s. Before uh, you take yeah, that, yeah, before right. you take a job like that. Yeah, right. But being too young, and getting into the police force, like how did, how do you, looking back on that, how did that negatively impact your ability to do your job? Well, like I said, I was, I, you know, in a sense, I, you know, the police academy kind of brainwashed you, man. You know, they, you know, and still, it's still all these different ideologies in you, man. And, you know, you know, it's just, uh, I think I, you know, I was just a little too young, man. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, is it is it anything that you did, you know, that you regret 
as a police officer? Took, took a lot of chances, man. You know what I mean? A lot of put myself in harm's way a lot unnecessarily. You know, right. yeah. You know, thinking you just invincible. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, but man, you know, in hindsight, man, I you know, I used to hate to be off. Yeah. I used to hate to when my weekend. You know, every every six weeks you get two week two consecutive weekends. Yeah. And I used to kind of hate when that come around, man, thinking that. Man, I was gonna miss something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> My boy's out there looking for some yeah, action, man. man. <laughs> hey, Dad. So tell me about some crazy police stories that you got, man. Like, what's what's some of the? You ever been in a shootout before? You ever Price, been in? Man, yeah, yeah. Twice, man, yeah. As a matter of fact, in 1977, me and my partner, you know, uh, Alani. Yeah. Uh, we. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I introduced Lonnie to golf. Yeah. And you know, one summer afternoon we working, man, and uh, we think, well, man, we get off, we coming over here, you exactly. know, play nine holes, right? Exactly. And we get a call. Uh huh. This is in July. We get a call, and man with a gun. Okay. So when we get to the location, um, we see a guy like throw something under a van. Right. Right. You know. So we get there, and the. Uh, the one guy is bleeding, you know, bleeding by, uh, from the head. And anyway, uh, we uh, we get the gun. Uh huh. Okay. We arrest the guy that that the that had the gun. Right. And we call the ambulance for the guy that was bleeding to take him to the Mount Sinai Hospital, right? But anyway, at that time, it's in '77. At that time, the guards at the hospital were armed. Uh huh. You know, so there's one guard at Mount Sinai, which was, 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 you know. Uh, talking to somebody, he's kind of distracted. And uh, we took the, the guy that was bleeding, took him into the emergency room. And so they wouldn't, they wouldn't accept him with the cuff. So, yeah. I so you there. had to uncuff the dude that had the gun. No, no, the, the guy that was bleeding. That was bleeding, okay, yeah, 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 right, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, so the doctors wouldn't treat him with the cuffs on. So I'm in the car with the prisoner, right? Right. So Lonnie took the cuffs off, but rather than Lonnie staying there with him, Lonnie came back outside and got in the car with me. We yeah. got outside the emergency room, talking about golf, man. We, we're going to Columbus Park, man. We played nine, and <laughs> so all golf, of a sudden, man, golf done put you in harm's way. <laughs> all of a sudden, man, this guy he he he, he, un, he disarmed the guard, and uh, it came out, man, now and start firing at us. We about maybe. I guess from the emergency room entrance, man, about maybe 20 feet. Back yeah, 20 feet away from him. From the from the doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came out of the doors, man, and just started shooting, man. And like the third bullet hit the windshield, cracked the windshield, right? So I'm on the driver's side, so Lonnie on the passenger side, directly in his line of fire, so yeah. he couldn't. Lonnie couldn't get out. Uh huh. So I had to j jump out of the car and like roll across the <laughs> service drive, man, and get behind a parked car that's on the other side, man, and you know, and by this time, the guy's at the squad car. Yeah. Lonnie can't get out, right? Yeah, Lonnie, Lonnie ducking down there. He's at Lonnie trying to get in the glove compartment, man. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I fired a couple shots, and then the guy started running. Right, 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 know, right. Started running down the service drive, you know. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, continued to shoot at him, man. And he, uh, he, uh, uh, he sh shot another, you know, innocent person, right? You know. Shot another person? Yeah. Uh huh. Just shooting, at, you know, yeah. Not, not, not purposely, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah. you know. But anyway, then so this guy and his wife was at, sitting in his truck reading the paper. I guess waiting for to be called or whatever, you know. And he commandeered their car. Yeah. You know, uh, made made her slide over, and, and made him get out. Yeah. The, the, dry, the, the husband, and he started driving the car back toward the truck back toward us, man. And that's when we kind of opened up on him, man. And yeah. They were, he jumped out of the truck, and we were able to get him, you know. Man, so after after you get into your first little shootout, man, how'd your perspectives about you know Chicago and the police officer position change? Well, man, that's when I kind of knew. This is in '77. I got on a job in '66. That's when I kind of knew I made the grade, man, because I, you know, I didn't panic. Yeah. You know, and I, I kind of kept my faculties about you know during the, during the shooting, and it wasn't until afterwards, man, when you start thinking what could have happened, or you know what I mean, if you know. What if, you know? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, looking back on when you was a police officer now and what Chicago was like then to what it is now, how, how has the city changed in your mind? Well, I'm going to tell you, man, uh, not only in Chicago, but all over, the police, the police are 
are disengaged. Yeah. You know, they're like, uh, you know, with the, with the, with these camera phones, man, you know, it, it's almost, if you do a good job, you get in trouble. If you don't do a good job, you get in trouble. So I guess a lot of police officers just taking the path of least resistance, man, just trying to pretty much do what they have to do. And, and that's it. And then the, the 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 bad guys, man, they're aware. They see it, you know. They, you know, back like I was telling you a while ago, back when I was a police officer, man, it was it would have been impossible to sell dope on the street, man, because we didn't allow that. Yeah. You know, we didn't allow young folks to congregate. You yeah. know, you know, and you know, if you lived in a ne uh, neighborhood, you know, hey, man, stand in front of your house. Right. Don't stand on the corner. If you don't live in the neighborhood, go to your neighborhood. You yeah. know, so you know. We, it's just y'all, y'all were. You feel like back in your day, y'all were more actively and more, I guess, compassionately policing right, the community right, 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 than right. now. Everybody just kind of checked out. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it kind of shows itself how police officers are retiring earlier and earlier. Yeah. You know, like I was just telling Jeff. I did 33 years with the police department. Now, man, police officer 20 years, 20 and out, and man. Out, and out. 20 and out. You know, they're not trying to get ma uh, max out. You know, get the maximum pension. You know. Yeah. yeah. And you would never be a police officer today, right? I don't think I could, man. I, not not with my mindset. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's right. what people ask me. They like, man, you you know, your dad did all this time as a police officer. Did the thought ever cross your mind to to be a police officer? I, I'm I like, thought maybe at one point you would. You know. Consider. You thought I would. I did. You thought Remember I'd be a police officer? College. Remember, you were in college, uh -huh. and they were giving a police exam. And not only did I try to encourage you, but I wanted you to try to encourage some of your frat brothers, you know? Yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah. I said, well, you know, even if you turn it down, man, it's just, just, just go an ahead option. And, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. You want me to be out here on these streets like this? You know, Rod, all dads kind of want their son to kind of follow in their footsteps, like I mean, you know, not all, yeah. but most, most dads. Well, I didn't man. know, I didn't know I let you down like that. No, but it wasn't, no, it wasn't, hey, no, hey, it, no. wasn't, it wasn't no chance in the Believe world me. you was gonna catch me out on these streets. Believe me, you didn't hey, you let gave, me down. You, you, gave, me down you, you gave me a lot of good traits, but uh, but you did not give me the resolve to handle the stuff that's going yeah, on in right, these streets. Right, right. Yo, boy, I would have been canceled so fast, dog. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> hey, dad, somebody look at me sideways is going up, dog. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. We almost need that, man. Hey, Dad, I can't. I can't. Hey, Rod, we almost need that, man. No, you know? I can't handle it, man. That's yeah. why I think it's such an important role, like for people that actively serve the community. You got to have a different level of composure, you know. Yeah. And I don't feel like I learned that from you, dog. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Right. But yeah. So, Dad, man, we out here at Columbus Park. This, this. You get that? You get that shot? <laughs> <laughs> This is our driving range. You know, this is called Range Talk, you know. Yeah. And when I was growing up out here at Columbus, this was where I saw everybody. This was, you know, my version of a driving range yeah, for, right. for all intents and purposes, yeah. right? right. And, and, you know, that's the first hole over there. And sometimes we will hit balls here, hit balls down one if yeah. we didn't see nobody right. coming. Uh -huh. But, like, talk to me about, you know, kind of the culture of, of coming up at Columbus Park, okay. you know. What was it like? Back in your day, what was Columbus Park? Day. Yeah, what was Columbus Park like yeah. back in the day? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, back in the day, this was not a driving area. We, I'm practice area, brother. Not. We had a. I was telling you, we had a uh, horseshoe. Yeah. You know, like a. You know, they used to play horseshoes. You know, uh -huh. and that, that's what this area was used for. So we would have to hit balls over across the sh on the other side of the street. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, it's just, you know, like maybe 60 yards, 70 yard shots, you know. Right. But to hit balls, we'd have to sneak back behind the maintenance shack over there, you know, by number seven and, you know, hit hit irons, you know. Right. Yeah. But, okay, man, getting back to how it started, man, uh, the, the culture, man. You know, back then, man, one of the attractions for me to the game was the friendships, man, that I, that I made down through the years, especially when I first started, man. Man, just some swell people, just some, you know, super guys. And it wasn't a lot of black men coming over here. You right, know? right. But all the guys that I met, man, we kind of bonded, man. And, you know, uh, it started looking forward to, to, to being around each other, man. It was, like I said, man, police department here. Yeah. Home, police department. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, and then, you know, so we, 
And then back in the day, man, it was, golf was like a, you know, a fashion, you made, made a fashion statement, you know, plaid pants, yeah. check pants, white shoes, white belt, you know, <laughs> yeah, right, you know. So, uh, yeah, man, everybody took pride in their appearance and that, man. We had golf clubs. Yeah. You know, club uh, uh, clubs. We had two clubs here. And, you know, there's clubs all over. That every every season, they we give tournaments, you know, mm-hmm. give golf tournaments and that. You know, we travel different, uh, Milwaukee, Rockford, you know, uh, even to uh, down to, uh, you know, down to southern Illinois, you know. Exactly. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And that's like, and that was the interesting Detroit, thing. Detroit, we go to Detroit every year. That, like, the, the thing that, that I remember most, you know, you bringing me, probably I'm like six, seven years old, when uh-huh. I could remember coming out to Columbus Park and spending time with you. Yeah. But the thing that I remember most was like, you put me in the space of all of these men and they were all like my fathers. Right, sir. You know what I mean? Right, right, you brought right. me around these guys. Yeah. They, they came from different walks of life, different backgrounds. Right. And man, the, the, the bond that y'all had, you know, the, the fact that y'all could play golf all day, gamble, exchange money, right. drink together, like right. talk crazy about right. each other. You know, the stories y'all would tell back right. and forth. Right. It was just like, I, I had never seen that. And I, and I kind of took that for granted as a, as a kid. You know, I'm listening like, man, all, I'm over here, all these old dudes over here lying about what they didn't Lying, do and stuff man. like that. And back in the day, man. Boy, I used to be out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but still, it was just like, I saw camaraderie. Yeah, we, I saw yeah. camaraderie right. around golf at a level that to this day, I have not been able to find. Yeah, right. Like the, the golf that I saw, the people that I saw, like the friendships that you have, right. like I've not been able to find that nowhere in golf, nowhere in the world. You're kidding, man. I was kind of under the impression that in different cities, especially urban cities, man, the, that they had a Columbus Park everywhere. They you know? do, but and they the, do. Mm-hmm. But all of y'all came from like the same era. Y'all right. was all like the same age, the same place and yeah. time. And y'all, y'all use golf in a way that it, today is not being used. Like I don't have people that to, to set up regular games with that oh, want to yeah, meet right. up and yeah, you right. know hang out and we yeah. could really make it a thing. Right, you were right. telling me stories. Y'all used to hang out at the golf course at one o'clock one in the morning. O'clock, yeah. Right, over the number six, that was before they put the fence around the parking lot. Yeah. But we used to uh, par- pull our cars up to the green, up right. by the green, facing the green, right. and chip and putt, man, 12, 1 o'clock at night, you know. Yeah. 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 And so, like, when, when, I, when I think about that, man, y'all really, when I, <clears throat> I joke and call this Columbus Park Country Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that I've seen how country clubs really work, when we back here now, like, this was a country club. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Y'all had real members. Yeah, right. Y'all had real games. Right. Y'all had a real like it was. And we had like a like a hierarchy. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right, like a flight, man. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. And so when I when I, you know, a lot of people would be like, uh, I you know I I'll be honest, I used to be ashamed of like telling people that that I was from out here. From Sam? Oh yeah. Yeah, like right. when I would go out, you know, these people, they would say they oh, members. You go to country club? Yeah, right? people say they members here, they members oh, there. I, I would just right. say like, man, I don't, you know, yeah. I don't really, I don't really have a home course or like, I don't really, you know. Right. Right. And, and and that that followed me for a long time, man. And it wasn't until like, like very recently that I really gained this appreciation for everything that this course is. And, and, and everything that it meant. Yeah. Because without this and without you coming here and feeling like you found a home here, like I would, I think that if you didn't have Columbus Park, I don't know how deeply you would have invested in me to find this game. Yeah, right. Cause you were spending all your time out here. So it was kind of like, I was coming out here just yeah, because right. I had to tag yeah. along with you. Yeah, you know yeah, what I right, mean? Right, right, right. So it's right. like without Columbus Park, yeah. like what would I have ever had a, a footprint and go? You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. And the reason, the reason I would bring you out here was, to me, it was like, this like a, it was like a sanctuary. Right. I mean, you know, uh, very rarely did you hear gunshots, you know, uh, you know, very, very rarely were there any uh, uh, incidents over here, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, but I, you know, I, fe- I felt that this, this was a safe space for you, you right. know. Yeah. And then, you, you know, your buddy Joey, and Ashley, yeah. you know, they were, you know, pretty much y'all were in the same age group. And so then they, you know, start playing golf and, you know, so you kind of start hanging with them. That's yeah. when, you know, the, the competitiveness started with you. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. So, I mean, talk to me, like, raising a kid in 
on the west side of Chicago, it was a lot of stuff as a kid that you just didn't let me do. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. you, you didn't let me right. go play basketball in the alleys with, right. with everybody that was around the house. Right. You know what I mean? You didn't let me, you know, go. It was a lot of parties that was going on, you know, right. around the west side and stuff that you would just try to keep me away from. Or if you couldn't, you know, be there, you wouldn't let me attend. What was your thought process behind keeping me away from so much and making sure that I stayed around the game of go? Yeah. Well, you know, being a police officer, man, I kind of, you know, 90% 90, 90 of the people police officers come in contact with, uh, you know, it's on a negative basis, you know. So I, uh, you know, I, I pretty much saw the worst of the worst, man. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and I tried to shelter you from that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, and then even the little kids in our neighborhood that were uh, playing basketball, you know, they were a little older than you, man. And I, you know, you know, saw uh, situations, man, where they, you know, would do something that wasn't right. You know, I, so I just didn't want that, that negative influence, man, you know. Yeah. That, yeah, right. I tell yeah. people, I tell people. And you know, let me say, say something. You know, as an African-American man, and I say this to all the African-American fathers, fathers, period. Man, if you don't spend time with your, with your, especially your, your, your young men, the streets will, you know. But I thought that it was like, you know, it was it was interesting, man. Like you would tell me, like I, I would complain about things, and you would tell me how uh, it, it don't take a lot for like a good kid to do bad things to be put in a bad situation. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's something that I didn't understand. Like, Dad, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. Right. And you'd be like, Man, nah. Like, you know, you you not in control of a lot of this stuff out right. here. Right. You know, you're not in control of the, the types of people you come into contact with, what their intentions are and all this other stuff. The peer pressure, you the know. The peer pressure, yeah, right, right. 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 I mean, I got a lot of friends. A lot of, a lot of young men get, get caught up, man, because uh, not a choice that they make, but right. just listening to, to, you know, listen to someone else, you know. But I'll tell you, though, like looking back on, looking back on, you know, everything that, that, uh, that, that we've experienced, I, I, I had a lot of resentment as a kid that I wasn't able to kind of be. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, saw that. But I also, yeah. I never felt like not safe. Like you gave me this confidence yeah. that like I was safe, I was good wherever I went. Yeah. It was because of the way people responded to you. Yeah, it was right. because of the way, you know, that, 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 that you made sure that people respected me, yeah, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. And I, I never, I remember this story, man. And this dude from our neighborhood came up and told it to me on one of your birthday parties. Okay. When I was probably like five or six years old, we was washing cars in the alley. And then this dude came flying down the alley. Right. Remember that? He yeah. almost hit me. Right. And you had to grab me out the road, right? right? And so then uh, the, the guy got down the alley and you were standing there just looking at him or something. You know, and I'm telling you the story, you probably tell it better, but the guy was looking and then uh, they, they tried to tell him like, hey, you almost hit little Raj. Yeah. And then the dude said, man, forget Raj, you right. know what I mean? Right. And so then uh, you like I took note that. of it, you took note of it, right. and then you grabbed me, we went in the house. Right. And then I, I don't remember what happened, but like maybe a week or so later, they dragged this dude to the front door, right. ring the doorbell, and the dude crying like, yeah. man, Raj, I'm sorry, uh, man, man, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. See what happened, I had, my, uh, I had a lot of buddies working in this area. Yeah. And you know, these guys were kind of, you know. They, doing they, they was doing their thing doing in the streets, thing. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so hey, man. And one thing those guys didn't, you know, like when you're out there trying to, doing wrong, man, uh, you don't want no t attention from the police. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And man, they, you know, they're keeping them under surveillance, man. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So finally, man, uh, you know, uh, Ed, you remember Ed? Yep, Ed yep. was kind of like the leader. You exactly. Know? So uh, I, I mentioned it to Ed, man. You know, he surprised, man, because he called the boys off, man. <laughs> hey, you had it rain, raining thunder out there, yeah, man. Yeah, right, 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 right. So they drug the boy down to the house, man. Man, I, I, I'm sorry, man, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, so, I remember that. But I think that that's an important thing as a father. It's not, it's not just that you, you didn't just put me or keep me out of harm's way. You made sure that, right. like, 
other people respected me and other yeah, people right. took care of me. Right. You know what I mean? And and you taught me a lot about how to protect like relationships that are near and dear to me yeah. because I want to make sure that people feel protected by me and, and, and they know that, you know, other people around know that they can't disrespect people that are with me yeah, right. as well. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? And that's something that you... And that's important, man, especially in, 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 in our culture. You know what I mean? Right. You know, right. You know, because, you know, they, they can kind of... Youngsters are kind of sense, man, when you don't belong or, exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly. Who is he, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And man. you got to make then, sure that... And then you end up trying to prove yourself, man, you know? Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. But, uh, but man, so another thing that, that I tell people a lot about, man, is just how, like, just like you took care of me, you was also committed to taking care of other kids in the neighborhood. Yeah, like, bro. you know, man, you started yeah. that junior golf program yeah. back in, like... Yeah. 30 years ago, man. 30 years? Yeah. And that's back uh, when 90, I was like 1990. a... Right. 19, well, 1991, right. So what put that on your heart to even just, you know, take that stance? Because that's something that obviously has, has made a tremendous impact on me is that not only was my dad, you know, a man of the people, not only was he way cooler than, than I could ever be and that people look up to him and was he respected, but he also made it a point to, to give back to kids in the neighborhood. You know, I, like, I just, I didn't understand, like, the reason for I used to get jealous of it, too. Like, man, why yeah, my right. dad out here spending time with all these yeah, other right, kids, right, man? Right, you know, right, making all right. this time and, and making sure that they get introduced to golf and yeah, stuff. Right. But what was your motivation for yeah. doing everything that you did so early in the game to bring kids into the sport? Right. Well, you know, as, as, our, cr as our club grew, our members got younger and younger. And, and, and some, of the, some of the members had small kids, you know. And... Uh, uh, you know, they would come out here and watch us play or, you know, come out here and, and hang, hang, hang out with us, man. And, and I remember a couple of kids, man, uh, going to other people yeah. that they didn't even know, man, and like looking in their golf bag or taking a club out, you know what I mean? Right. And, I mean, like, to me, I said, man, they are showing interest, like, you know what I mean? You know how you be around things so long, you know. And uh, that's what kind of encouraged our club to start the junior golf camp. Yeah. You know, in, in 1991, man. And, and me and, and, and George, you know, kind of kept it going, man, ever since, you know? Yeah. And what was kind of like, is the goal just to, was the goal just to grow the game or was it just to? Well, you know, not so much, you know, because this is a junior golf camp, not so much to grow the game, but just to introduce kids to this game. Man, this is a great game. This is a great game, but you know, we don't have the accessibility to it, you know, that yeah. maybe other people do, you know, and we, you know, we just try to introduce them, man, you know. A lot of kids don't even know what golf is. Right. You know, like, right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, and, uh, you know, we, we've had a few kids that went through the program for, you know, two or three years. And had you know, grow, grow, growed up, and got into the you know, uh, uh, you know, the working world, and started back playing golf. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. You know, so you know, yeah, it's it's been encouraging, man. You know. And I feel like you know, if if nothing ever came of that, you making those efforts, and you and the you know the Road Kings and all your boys making those efforts, like you know it's all very impactful as to why we in this position now, like how we got Callaway out here and why we doing all of these things, man, you know? Yeah, so yeah. it's like all of this, I, I just feel grateful that you put all of this effort and energy, you and your boys, y'all put all of this effort and energy into growing the sport and making sure that I had opportunities to experience the sport. And, you know, it's, it's, it's meant the world to me, dog. Right. You know, but like now you look and you see the little the little stuff that I got going on, man. Like what you yeah, think of yeah, all this? Yeah. You know? Hey man, first of all, man, I'd like to give a shout out to uh Hook a Kid on Golf, man, yeah. for they've been one of our sponsors for the last seven years and they provide us with uh uh twenty sets of golf clubs for the kids and uh -huh. you know, equipment and uh I, you know, I, I just like to thank them, you know. But, but what, uh, you, what you think about all this stuff we got going on now, man? Hey, man. But yeah, nah, man, you're my son. I love you, man, to death. But I knew you was going to do well, whatever endeavor you chose, man. You know what I mean? You didn't treat, so, me, you didn't treat me like it the whole time, I baby. I it, man. You know, because, <laughs> hey, man, I, 
I, I wanted you to be a golfer, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and man, I'm gonna tell you, man, that's one of the reasons that I uh, chose to retire early. Right. You know, because, you know, you were playing junior golf, you know, we were traveling to Florida, man, and, and, and most of the venues, man, we, we'd be the only African Americans there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, you showed the, showed the skills, you know, the, you know, so, hey, you know. But I just didn't, I don't know but why. I think, man, what happened to you, man, was at, at Fenwick, man, in your, in your junior year. Uh-huh. I remember Coach Curtin called me, man. He, Roger, you know, you got, got a minute, man, because you come up to school. And uh, so I said, yeah, you know, so I went to talk to him. He asked me, he said, man, what's wrong with Roger? Because, <laughs> you know, you had a passion for golf, man. But I think, I said, man, I think he got his first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Them girls, they change stuff, man, baby. I know they it, man. I, hey, I, man, Coach Curtin couldn't understand what was happening. I ain't, I ain't playing get playing on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't get them player jeans like you, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah right. Have my nose open. But I think that, you know, being, if I was being truthful about my golf experience as a kid, I don't think that I saw, like, I didn't relate to the sport uh -huh. uh, the way that I hope the kids are able to do it now. Yeah. Because I didn't see a lot of people, like, y'all, he was my dad and, you know, a lot of your friends, they were like my fathers and uncles and stuff uh -huh. like that. But I didn't want to necessarily be like them. Everybody that I wanted to be like was doing other stuff. You know, like, the people that was playing basketball in the uh -huh. alleys are like, the, you know, like the, I, I saw more of myself in them yeah, right, than right. I did in the sport. And it wasn't the right people that had helped me bridge that yeah, gap. Right, right. You know, and so I that's something that, yeah. that's something that I struggle with. So, like, a lot of my, like, involvement in golf was because I wanted you to be proud of me. Yeah, like, right. early on. Yeah, right, you right, know what right, I mean? Right. That was the reason that I played. I wanted your approval i wanted you know yeah. for you to you know how because i understood how everybody was bragging about their kids over there yeah. i wanted you to have something to brag about uh -huh. and i had never loved golf for like my own reasons oh, you, did, you know what i mean yeah. and so when 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 to be honest when i went to high school uh -huh. and like when i was able to be done with golf it was like a relief was it yeah okay. right. it was really like a relief that i could uh -huh. Put the game down and like do other stuff oh, because okay. it just yeah. like i just my intentions wasn't there yeah, you know right. and i always knew that that weighed on our relationship a little bit because uh you did sacrifice a lot to make sure that i got exposed right. to this game and right. you know i remember them trips that you would take me down to florida and do stuff like that i knew you were sacrificing a great deal uh -huh. but it's like i didn't feel like that was my path yeah, you know right, right, right. and so then when i when i found golf again as an adult you know i just I, I, I fell in love with it on my own. Yeah, like right, I, yeah. I had a moment, yeah, yeah. I had moments like you had, yeah, like right. when you was on the police force and stuff. And so now like I'm able to put everything together that you wanted me to see when I was a kid. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. And it took a little bit more time, yeah, yeah. but I think that if it, I'm, it, I'm glad it happened this way yeah, right. because if I would have kept playing golf when I was younger and yeah. tried to keep forcing it, I would have hated it. Yeah, and right, I never right. would have came and, back. And, you, and, and, and we've met uh, a lot of kids, man, whose parents kind of forced them to play golf, man, or, you know what I mean? Right. And, and, and they ended up not liking it, man. Right. You know, right, right, yeah. So, I mean, I, I just. I understood that, you know. Yeah, but I, I mean, understood that. all in all, dog, yeah. like, I just want to say. I just tried to. I just tried to put you in a position to to to, to do well. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, right. right. You know, right. You did, and yeah. you did, and that's why I want to say. You know, all in all, like I just want you to know that nothing you've ever done for me is unappreciated. Oh, I know that, bro. You know what I mean? I know, nothing man. you've ever done for me. Yeah, I know. Like man. the 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 father figure you are, the advice that you've given me. Know. You know, the sacrifices that you've made for me. None of that stuff has gone without notice. Like I sit, I sit deeply and think about all the time that we spent together and the yeah, stuff that we've yeah. done. We had, we had a fun time, man. We had, we had a had fun time, run, man. You know, and so like, if you, if you could give any advice to fathers out there, you know, like understanding, you know, and it took us a long time to get to, you know, the place that our relationship is now. Right. But if you could give any advice to fathers out there that are raising young kids and, you know, want to get them the experience of golf and, and stuff like that, what what would you give them? Well, you know, first it starts, man, with, uh, like I said, introduction, in, introduction. You know, like I said, a lot of a lot of kids, especially black kids, they don't they don't really know what golf is, you know, because you, when you look at a golf term on TV, you don't see people that look like us, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, it's just, man, just, they're creating 
junior golf camps all over, all right. over, not only here in Chicago, but I'm sure all over the country, you know. And just to introduce the kids, man, some gonna like it, some aren't, you know, yeah. but, you know, just to introduce them, man. But the key, like I was saying earlier, man, if parents don't spend time with these kids, man, the streets will, man. So, mm. especially in today's culture, man, you know, and it's so easy to, to just get caught up, man. Only take one mistake, man, and, uh, you know, take your path, take your life on a path that, 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 that you know, you can't recover from, you right. know. Right, right. So, you know, just got to gotta spend time and got to nurture them, man, and just show them love, you know, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, man, I, that's them wise words, and I just want to tell you, I love you, dog. Yeah, what you got to get me for Father's Day, man? Hey, so, bro, look, this is hey, No, no, listen, 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 listen. Hey, right. Bro, man, I, hey, club, look, man, look, man, look, man. look, look, come on, man. Hey, we're hey, we going to talk to Callaway about that, but look, I done took you on the trip to Pebble. I know, man. I took, look, I took you to Pebble. Hey, man, yeah, hey, man. I had, hey, man, right. Out of 50 years in this game, man, that was the most enjoyable time I've had, man. I, you know, I encourage anybody that hasn't been, man, hasn't played Pebble, man. It's kind of kind of costly, but man, hey, man, Look, you owe it to yourself. I took you to Pebble. I appreciate it, I dog. got Callaway out here, man. Doc, I brought Callaway yeah, to the west side. Yeah, man. Are we even? Okay, let me see. <laughs> Is Scotland still on the table? <laughs> <laughs> My man trying to run it up, dog. Come on, nah. man. It's still hey, on the table, Look, man. I just, I just want to make sure at the end of all of this, you can say, like, all right, you paid me back, man, dog. I've been paid back, man. Oh, yeah, over and over, man. All right. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, dog. Appreciate you, lady, man. So there you have it. A few words of wisdom and probably the nicest things I'll ever say about my dad on camera. Uh, my biggest takeaway from all of that is, as a parent, you have to take the time. Because if you don't, then the streets will or I will because I love the kids, which kind of make me the streets by associated property, gang gang. Uh, but also, you heard it here, me and my pops are finally even on life. So let that be a lesson to you kids. If you ever feeling guilty about how much time and energy your parents spend raising you, just take them to Pebble and have Callaway compromise their safety and pull up to the west side of Chicago and you too can be even. Uh, happy Father's Day to all my fathers out there. I love y'all and before we go, a special shout out to Callaway and everybody that tuned in and made season one the hit that it was. After some intense negotiation, I'm proud to let you all know that Callaway and I have reached an agreement that will extend range talk for not one season, not two seasons, not three seasons, not probably three seasons. Uh, but anyways, to all my haters out there, uh, I only got two things to say to y'all. Uh, uh, season two, baby, we out here, let's go. Man.